Hello, it's on now. <laughs> How's everybody again? It's good to see everybody out this evening. And um, we're going to get started. Um, so, Brother Rivio, you, you want to just leave us in the prayer so we can get started, please? It's Reverend Neil, my God's present. I come to the garden alone. While the dew is still on the roses And the voice I hear falling on my ear The Son of God is close Gracious, loving Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise once again for another Holy Sabbath day. We give you thanks and praise for being here, Lord, to call upon your name once again. Knowing that song reminds us that you want to have a personal relationship with us. You want to walk with us and talk with us. Help us, Lord, for we need your help every step of the way. We need, Lord, your spirit to fall upon us afresh so that we can understand the things of God. So forgive us of our sins, cleanse us from unrighteousness. We ask that you be with our listeners out there in a special way that this program, Lord, will touch their hearts and bring about a change in their lives that they need at this time. We pray for those who are here, that they too, Lord, will do well to take heed to what thus said the Lord. Be the proceedings, may you get the honor and glory, may we all be drawn, for we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. On number 14, come thou Come thou forth of every blessing. Number 14 and 334 in the church hymnal. Number 14. Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Strings of mercy never ceasing, come for songs of love. Second stanza. Here I raise my heavenly song. It provides I help thou come, and I hope by thy good pleasure save me to arise at home. Jesus taught me when a stranger wandering. From the full of God, he to rescue me from danger, interposed his precious blood. Oh, the grace of great redemption, daily I can strength to be. Let thy goodness, like a feather, bind me closer still to thee. Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Prone to live the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy God's above. Amen. Our hearts. 
Here's my horn, Lord. Take and seal it. Seal it for thy God's above. 67, 67, and 3, and 340 in the church hymnal. We have heard a joyful song, Jesus saves, Amen. Jesus saves. We have heard a joyful sound. Jesus says, Jesus says, spread the gladness all around. Jesus says, Jesus says, bear the news to every land. Climb the leaves and cross the way. Onward is the Lord's command. Jesus saved, Jesus saved. Second stanza. Rough it all the rolling time. Jesus saved, Jesus saved. Tell to sin as far and wide. Jesus saved, Jesus saved. Sing ye islands of the sea. Echo back the ocean caves, I shall keep a jubilee. Jesus save, Jesus save. Third stanza. Sing above the battle cry. Jesus save, Jesus save. By his dead and endless life. Jesus save, Jesus save, sing it softly through the gloom, when the heart of mercy great, sing it dry and all the tomb, Jesus save, Jesus save. Give the winds a mighty voice, give the winds a mighty voice. Jesus said, Jesus said, let the nation not rejoice. Jesus said, Jesus said, salvation full and free, highest hills and deepest caves. This our song of victory. Jesus said. Jesus save. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Can you stand up, please, for our opening of our theme song? Troublesome times are here. Failing men's heart with fair freedom. We all who dare now is our stay. Humble your hearts to God, safe from the chasing rod. Pilgrims trod Christians away. Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon. Many will meet their doom. Trumpets shall surely sound. All of the dead shall rise. In the sky, no one dies, heaven but bow. Love us so many cold, homes of gold. But it's to leave us about. Many signs come to pass, and at last. Very fast, trumpet will sound. Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon. Many will meet their doom. Trumpet will surely sound. All of the dead shall rise in the sky, going where no one dies, heaven would bow. Trouble will soon be evermore. When we meet on that shore, freedom for cares. Rising up in the sky, telling this world goodbye. Home would be 
then we'll fly glory to share. Jesus is coming soon. Morning on night on noon. Many will need dead doom. Trumpets will sound. jolly sound. All of the dead shall rise. In the sky, no one dies heavenward by. Jesus is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. Morning or night or noon, many will be dead. Doom, trumpets will surely sound. All of the dead shall rise. In the sky, no one dies heavenward bound. Amen. Everyone could be seated. Good night, good night. Good night, good night, good e everybody. Uh, could we need for prayer, please? Father in heaven, I thank you for all, that, all your many blessings. I thank you for waking us, waking us up this morning for the breath of life. And Father, you tell, you tell us that it is in you that we live and move and have our being. Father, we have no room for boasting. It's all you. So even now, I pray that you would help us to use our lips to honor you. And Father, help us to use our, the bodies that you have given us to, to honor you through our lifestyle. Save us from our sins. And I pray for your Holy Spirit, even as we spend some time in your word, that we may understand your word, Lord, like we've never done before. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen, amen. Uh, good night again, brethren. This is uh, our youth hour, it's called Youth Moment with Christ. And today we are going to look at the chapter in Seth to Christ, Confession. Amen? Isn't everyone excited? Yeah. Hey, you sound like it, man. <laughs> All right, uh, pleasant good evening to those who are on our media, Facebook, YouTube, and other revenues of social media. We like to say a good night. Uh, will the panelists kindly introduce them th themselves? Good evening, everyone, Brother Isaac. Good evening, my name is Paul. Good evening, everyone, Sherman Callanam. Good evening to all, Brother Mullings. Sister Sanders. Good evening to all, Derico Wilson. Good evening to all, Sean Wilson. Good evening, Brother Sanders. Good evening, my name is Polly Shreemala. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Now, th 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 evening, this evening we would do something different. If the audience have a question, 
they get they get they get voice it after the the panel has already finished. Amen. Amen. All right. The first question to the panel will be: What is the Bible definition of confession? Brother Isaac. Okay. There's there's more than one way to give a definition. Um, you could even give a definition by explicitly saying what the thing is, or you can give a definition by example. And let's turn to Psalms 51. And in Psalm 51, we see confession is taking place. Um, and I'm going to give the definition of confession based on the example we see. In Psalms 51. In Psalms 51, um, Psalm 51 shows us the the confession of David. And I, I'm going to zero in on verse 3, Psalms 51, verse 3. And it says, For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. So if you were to give a definition of confession, conf confession is acknowledging our sin and bringing it forward to God and telling God, Father, I acknowledge that I have done this wrong, and asking God for forgiveness. Because that's what David does. Well said, well said. Brother Miller? Um, for my answer, I have Proverbs 28, verse 13. Excellent. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whosoever confesseth and forsaketh them shall have, shall have mercy. Um, for this, I feel it's akin to what Brother Isaac has said. You have to confess, basically. It says it in the verse here. You have to make known that, that what you've done is wrong to yourself and to God for him to give you mercy and to forgive you. You can't just say, oh, I, acknowledge this. I acknowledge this and that's it. You have to understand what you've done and feel that you need mercy from God to forgive you. All right, that's, that's, that's well said. That's well said. Brother, brother, brother Sherman, question two. What does Christ promise to do for us if we confess our sins? Uh, let us turn to 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Verse 9. It says, everyone got it? Yeah. Amen? It say, now I rejoice, not that ye were made sorry, but that ye sorry to, sor sorry, sorrow to repentance. For ye were made sorrow, sorry after a godly manner, but that ye may receive the mean damage, damage by use in the nothing, nothing. Sin. Okay. Okay. Uh, for godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be, not to be repented of, but the sorry, the sorrow of the world worketh death. That's, that's well said. So therefore, by a godly sorrow, it will lead to repentance. 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 All right. Brother Serrano. Let's turn to First John chapter one verse nine, please. Everybody got it? You got it? Now, what I want to just state prior to reading this is that when you hear the word if, it's kind of a, a condition. So as I read, just bear in mind that, 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 short, that short note, if. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all righteousness. Now, right there. Oh, unrighteousness. Thank you. So right there, we see two rewards if we confess our sins, but only if we confess our sins. So when and if you confess our sins, we confess our sins. We see that we are not only cleansed from all righteousness, but we are also forgiven. Well said. Sister Sanders. Let's turn to 
First John 5 and 17. All unrighteousness is sin, and there is a sin not unto death. And, but if we confess our sins to God, he will keep his promise and do what is right. He will forgive us of our sins and purify us from all our wrongdoing. Amen. Taylor, I mean, uh, Wilson? Wilson, um, right. same question, right? Number two? Yeah, you could, yeah. Same okay, um, Psalms 91, verse 15. Psalms 91, verse 15. Everyone got it? He shall call up upon me, and I, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble, and I will deliver him and honor him. So uh, my understanding of that is uh, confessing our sins to God, he will, like, he will honor us for, for like, um, giving that confession, I guess. Well, I I appreciate the effort, but it's kind of it's kind of uh, wasn't exactly the, the explanation I wanted, but oh. I appreciate oh. the effort, brother. Brother Wilson, well, right. well, right. brother Wilson. All right. Um, forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness, and to save us. That's my opinion on it. Your opinion? Yeah. Do you have a Bible text to support your opinion? No. no? no All right. Then. Not that. We can we move on to the, to the next question with our brother Sanders. What must one do after they confess their sins to God? What must one do after they confess their sins to God? The Bible is, can we go to Ezekiel 14, verse 6? After the question was, What must one do after they confess their sins to God? Ezekiel 14, verse 6. And it says, And it says, Therefore I say unto the house of Israel, Thus said the Lord God, Repent, and turn yourselves from your idols, and turn away your faces from all your abominations. So Christ requires us to turn away from our sins. Amen, amen. Sister, Sister Miller? Um, can we go to John chapter 3, verse 15? John chapter 3, verse 17, sorry. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And I feel like since, since God sent his son to die for us, and he is the one that grants us forgiveness through just prayer, we should go on trying not to sin. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, well, Brother Isaac, my question to you is, does the Bible say we are to confess to one another? Does the Bible say that we must confess to one another? To one another. Or does the Bible support that we confess our sins to our <laughs> neighbor or brother or say. so forth? Does the Bible support us confessing our sins to our brother? Let's turn to James 5 or 16. The 
the Bible tells us in James chapter 5, verse 16, it says, confess your faults, confess your faults one to another, and pray for one another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous, a righteous man, avail it much. What the Bible promotes is that if I were to do you something um, in terms of disrespecting you or offending you in any way, I should confess to you that wrong that I have done towards you. Now, that wrong, that fault, is a sin. Now, a fault can be a sin. Um, so, yes, you can confess your sins to man, but in terms of if you offended them. Now, if we're talking oh, see, about, if we're talking about, if we're talking about, if we're talking about um, sins in terms of, oh, I lied or whatever the case may be. I don't go to Brother Cash to confess that. I go to God. But in terms of an offense done to the person, then definitely, yeah. I'm going to lay you off the hook tonight. <laughs> I'm going to lay you off the hook tonight. Brother, Brother Miller, my question is to you, Brother Miller, is can any enter heaven without confessing and forsaking their sins of any kind? Well, the answer for that is no. And can we please turn to Proverbs chapter 28, 13? He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Well, I feel like this is a pretty straightforward verse right here. It tells us basically everything we need to know. Like, you have to confess. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. In some areas like you have to ask for forgiveness for sins that you've committed especially if it's in the moment like you can't go on knowing that you have a sin and not confess it you're basically holding on to that for no reason especially if you know it's as simple as praying for praying for forgiveness so that's my answer for that all right nice nice brother brother sherman same question so can any can any enter heaven without confessing and forsaking sins of any kind? Uh, let's turn to Revelation chapter 22 and 14. Then again, a special good night to those who are on the internet, social media. If you have a question, please feel free to call in or to text, so on and so forth. It says here, blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter through in the gates into the city. So what the question is, can, can any enter heaven without confessing and forsaking sin? Basically, um, no, they can't, they, can't, they can't enter heaven because they have to be doing the, the commandments. They have to be keeping God's standards. All right, all right, that's nice. Uh, Brother Serrano. Let's turn to the book of Ecclesiastes 12, chapter 12, verse 13, please. And it says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Now, at first, you would use ask, how is this connected to the question? Yes, yes, As uh, a, I, I might ask that for true. Indeed, uh, indeed, indeed, granted. Yeah, yeah. Um, understanding that as Christians, we must live just as Christ did, because we are Bahamians, we live in the Bahamas, so just as Christ lived, we must live as well. Christ did not sin. Christ is in heaven. Therefore, to be where Christ is, we too must be flawless, meaning sinless. So no, sin cannot enter into heaven. Well, I, I accept your answer as no, but I don't think that that text co coincide with, 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 the, with the question. I use that text to say this. It is our complete duty. Well, as I said, it's our complete duty to keep the commandments. And if we keep the commandments, we can't sin. That 
by default that right. eliminates sin completely. Point case, point case, point case, point case, point case, point case. Sister, Sister Sanders. Let's turn to. I have a quote for that. You see, your salvation depends on only one thing what Jesus Christ accomplished when he died on the cross for us. Why did he do that? He did it for one reason, so he could become the final and complete sacrifice for all sins. He was without sin, but on the cross, all your sins and my sins was placed on him, and he died in our place. As the Bible says, Christ for sins once for all the righteous, the right unrighteous, to bring you to God. Amen. Brother Wilson. Okay, can we turn to Acts chapter three, verse nineteen, please? Okay, so it says, Repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be bottled out so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord and that he may send Jesus Christ who was presented to you before. before. Oh, my bad, sorry. Preach to you before. Amen, amen, amen. Brother Wilson. All right, let's turn to Acts chapter 3, verse 19 as well. Uh. Hey, wonder. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out from the presence of the Lord. So my answer to that is, no, they can't because God require you to confess, to enter heaven. It is his rule. Amen, 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 Brother Wilson. All right, Brother Sanders, my question to you, we're going to move on. If a person confess a sin and falls back into it, is their power available for them? Let us go to John six forty four. It says in John six forty four, No man can come to me except the Father which had sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. So the only reason why we can come to Christ and ask for forgiveness is through the power of Holy uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit to begin with. And then in John fifteen five, the Bible says, Without me referring to Christ, we can do nothing. So power is available for us to do right. But we must, we must practice doing right now because we know that there's coming the time and the Holy Spirit will, re, will be withdrawn from the world. Amen, amen. Sister, Sister, Sister Miller. Can we turn to Psalms 86 verse five? Yes, I believe that a person can sin and there's so power to forgive them if they sin again with that 
exact sin because it says, For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive and plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. Amen. Amen. Brother, Brother Isaac, the same question applies to you. If a person, Can, question seven. Yeah. If a person confess, confesses a sin and falls back into it, is there power available for them? Okay, definitely. Um, Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. Um, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Um, so that includes if someone were to fall into a sin. Um, the Bible tells us if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father. So if a person sins and they fall into, um, um, into sin, God has promised that if we come back to him, he is ready to forgive, but, and also he, had, he can give us the victory to overcome that sin, not to do it again. And that's the beauty of the gospel. Amen, amen, amen. Brother Melo. Um, yeah, same question, same question. Um, I apologize, but I don't have a verse for that. Mm. Want me to move on? I'll, I'll move on, I'll move on. Want to read Galatians 6 verse 1? All right, the question again is, if a person confesses a sin and falls back into it, is there power available for them? Thank you. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye, ye which are spiritual, resort such and in one, my bad, restore such and, such and one in the spirit of meekness considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Amen. Amen, brethren. Amen. All right. Our last question for the night, brethren. Last question. Is there a difference in the mindset and action of one who confesses and forsakes their sins? If so, how? I'll repeat the question again. Is there a difference in the mindset and action of one com who confesses and forsakes their sins? If so, then how? Let's turn to the book of Proverbs, chapter 23. 28, 28, chapter 28. Amen. It says, Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13 says, He that covered his sins shall not prosper, but whosoever forsake, confess it and forsake it them shall have mercy. All right, wonderful. Brother Serrano. I can't remember. Let's turn to Second Corinthians five or seventeen. Five or seventeen. And it says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Amen. And so to that is yes. It's like taking off an old garment and putting on a new one. You cannot do the same things that you used to do when you were not in Christ. When you come to know Christ is the mindset, stay on Christ, you will always think about right and wrong. 
Amen. Brother Wilson. Um, okay, so my answer to that is new birth experience and Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Okay, that's it. I end. A amen. <laughs> amen. Brother Wilson. All right, let's turn to Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. All right, and it says... Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. It's a change, it's a complete transformation in someone's life. That's what. Amen, amen, Brother Vincent. Brother Sanders? Uh, can we turn to Second Corinthians 7, verse 10 and 11? And it says, for godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. Now the Apostle Paul kind of give, not kind of, he gives the, he gives the attitude of the person after they have confessed their sins and they want to turn with all their heart from their sin, he gives the attitude of that person. He says that, for behold the self same thing, that you sorrowed after of godly sought. What carefulness it wrought in you. Yea, what clearing of yourselves. Yea, what indignation. Yea, what fear. Yea, what vehement desire. Yea, what zeal. Yea, what revenge. In all these things you have approved yourselves to be clear in this matter. So what the Apostle Paul is saying is that, he said, what carefulness. When you see that thing again, you'll be careful not to do that no more. And if you slip into it, or before you slip into it, you'll be zealous and you want to take revenge upon that thing. You, you want to be upset with that thing. So it, 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 we have to ask Christ for the Holy Spirit to give us the, the, the right attitude to be, to be in opposition to the sins that we love. Amen. Amen. Sister Miller? We can turn to Psalms chapter 32, verse 1 to 5. Psalms chapter 32, verse 1 to 5. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. When I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into the drought of summer, Selah. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgivest the iniquity of my sin. Selah. And this is a good example to me because David here is clearly showing that he felt guilty when he didn't confess his sins, and when he was able to, he felt a burden lifted off of him. So if we confess our sins, we will feel more free and alive, and if we don't, we will be more depressed. Amen, amen, amen. Now we are going to go to closing remarks, and then we'll invite the, the brethren to ask questions if they so desire. Start with Brother Isaac. The closing remarks comes from John chapter 5. John chapter 5, verse 4. And as you turn there, is it verse 4? John chapter 5, verse, verse, verse 14, sorry. John chapter 5 verse 14. As you, as you turn there, um, what happened was there's, this, there's a, a man, he'd been sick for um, 38 years, infirmity, and he just was made whole. Christ just made this man whole. Um, and in verse 14, we see what Christ told him after 
he was made whole. And I didn't get a chance to answer this question, but the question that, that this is an answer to is, um, what must one do after one has confessed? And it says here, afterwards Jesus finded him in the temple and said unto him, behold, thou art made whole. Listen carefully now. Sin, how much? Sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon thee, come unto thee. Confession is a beautiful thing. <clears throat> Confession and God forgiving us is a beautiful thing, but I love the gospel and I love the religion that, that the Bible promotes because it not only promotes that we can confess and say, I'm sorry, but it promotes this idea that, hey, guess what? You don't have to do it again. Grace, it's one thing when you talk about grace in terms of grace um, being able, that power of God being able to forgive us of sin, but that's not only the definition of grace. The primary definition of grace is the grace that God imparts so we can give, get victory over sin. And Amen. I believe that although confession is important, um, we have to come to a point where, by God's grace, we are intentional that we, would, we, we don't want to do that sin again and we are living that life, that life of Enoch, that life of Christ, where sin is not on our plate by God's grace. Amen. For my closing remarks, can we turn to Psalms 103, verse 12. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Now, I feel that with this verse, this means that up until the close of probation, there's a chance that we can ask for forgiveness and get right with God. But we don't know when our probation is going to close, so we need to get right at this moment and not wait around for, to ask for forgiveness from God. That we need to get right like at this very moment in time, and we can't be lollygagging, acting the fool as if we have all the time in the world because we, we're not going to live forever until we get to heaven. And to get to heaven, you have to ask for forgiveness and get right with God. Powerful, powerful, powerful. Better, chairman. Uh, my closing remarks will be um, Luke chapter 6 and verse 46. It says, it's a short passage. It says, why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? And um, Christ asks us to do simple stuff to, to help us to improve our health. And if we, if we reject the health message, the dress reform, uh, the, the, the mind reform also, the heart, the heart reform, and how can, how can we call him Lord, Lord, if we reject those things? So it's, uh, it's something that we should think about um, through our daily walk with Christ. That's my closing remarks. Amen, amen. Uh, well, my closing remarks will be coming from John chapter 8, verse 11. And in this passage is when they brought the, the men brought the harlot before Christ because she was caught in the act of adultery. And it says, she said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I commit, condemn thee. Go and sin no more. And this is relevant to the topic at hand because we also have to remember that we must forsake our sin after confession. It makes no sense we apologize for something and do it again. If I slap you, I say sorry, and I slap you again, we made no progress. In the same way with Christ, if I sin, I say, Father, forgive me, and I go sin again, I made no progress. So confession and forsake, and that's what I want to emphasize with this text, and those are my closing remarks. Amen. Amen. My closing remark is coming from Steps to Christ, page 96, paragraph 5. Look up, look up, and let your faith continually continually to, to increase the let this faith guide you along the narrow path that leads you to the gate of the city of gold into the great beyond the wide abounded future of glory that is for is that is for that is redeemed is redeemed amen okay my closing remarks is john chapter 5 verse 14 
Then those two men, when they had seen the sight of that Jesus did, said, This is truly the prophet who is to come into the world. And that under that just say, live a changed life and sin no more, except God, God's way of living. Amen. Amen. Better words. My closing remark is to confess with whatever you have to the Lord. For the Lord will provide you and forgive you for what you ask. And don't hide the truth from the Lord. Just straight up say what you have to say. Amen. Amen. And follow the Lord. Uh, I want to take this opportunity to to really tell every youth out there to get their hands on the book Steps to Christ. It's a very it's a very powerful book for youths, especially in this generation. And uh, you meet a lot of people when call upon to pray and ask God to pray, but they say they can't pray. But uh, this is Sister White says, and you can relate this to confession as well. Sister White says in Steps of Christ, page 93, paragraph 2, she says, Prayer is the opening of the heart to God as to a friend. So we could take that as, although we have sinned, we could go to Christ as a friend and tell him all that we have done. And then she goes on to say, Not that it's necessary in order to make known to God what we are, but in order, uh, in order to enable us to receive him. Prayer does not bring God down to us, but brings us up to him. So true Christ, when we open our heart to God as to a friend, Christ really accepts these prayers because we are being sincere and we are being authentic and genuine with what we have to tell him. That is my closing comments. Amen. Can we turn to Mark chapter 3, verse 28 and 29? Mark chapter 3, verse 28 and 29. Verily I say unto you, all sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men and blasphemies wherewith soever they shall blaspheme. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation. And the scripture is talking about the unpardonable sin and not just taking the Lord's name in vain or God's name in vain in general, but committing a certain sin over and over, like everyone basically said, and still trying to ask for forgiveness because it's not sincere. We have to be sincere with, with when we try to ask for forgiveness and really try and ask God to take away that sin from you and the love you have for that sin because it is not love for God. Amen, amen. Uh, thank you all panelists. Now we are gonna to go to the audience. If there's any question those would like to ask, you feel free to do so. Brother, Brother Davis. Good night, everyone. Uh, Brother Cash, I know in the earlier part of the discussion, you asked a question concerning uh, fault and sin or confessing of sin. Yes, yes. Could you repeat the question again? Which one is it? Or we should confess to each other? Yeah. All right, all right, all right. All right. Read that um, again. It says... Number four. All right, what does the Bible say we are... No, does the Bible say we are to confess to one another? Yeah, now, I, I heard the panelists, but specifically... Uh, Brother Isaac gave a answer, and I want to be sure I, that I understand exactly either what he said or what he meant. Uh, and I stand to be corrected, but I don't know if he was saying that if you have a specific sin, voices of fault, it depends on the severity of the fault, whether you confess it as a sin to someone or you confess it to God. 
And I know in Psalm 51, 4, when, when David spoke, David said, to only thee and only thee only have I sinned. Now, if he had just say, have, uh, have I sinned, I could take that to say, well, since I was talking to God personally, and he's saying I sinned to God, but I could have sinned to someone else. But he say, only to thee have I sinned. So there's no confession to no man. Now, you can confess a fault that is a sin. But there can't be no confession of no sin to no man. So I just wanted to make that clear if, if that's what Brother Isaac was actually saying. Point, point taken, point taken. You want to, want to, all right, go ahead. Um, Brother Davis, is a fault, a, can a fault be a sin? Yes, right? So, if I wronged um, Brother Cash, he is God's creation. Yes or no? So, in disrespecting him or dishonoring him, I sin against God. Yes or no? So, when we talk about, when we talk about confessing, and the Bible mentions confess your faults to, to one, one to another, but a, a fault can be a sin. And if I am confessing that, okay, if I punch him, that, that act is a sin. And if I say, I'm sorry, I punch you, I am confessing that sin. Because that's what it is. It isn't no, I mean, <laughs> it's the transgression of God's law. I transgress the law of God. So, call it, I mean, call it what you want. It's transgressing God's law, and it looks like sin to me. You want a, you want a mic, sister? Pastor, sister, mic. Sister Carla, she want to make a comment. Amen, sister, amen. And I, um, in the margin, um, fault says trespass. And I understand what Brother Isaac was saying initially when he answered the question. The Bible, if the Bible says confess your faults to one another, that's what the Bible says. The margin says trespass. Like he, he gave an example, if you trespass against Brother Cash, you want to confess that to Brother Cash, but you still have to confess it to God also. Not that you're asking for forgiveness from Brother Cash to pardon sins from in heaven, but that your relationship will be okay again back on the, the level plane it was before you trespass against your brother. Now, your brother is not God to say scratch that off the record in heaven. You gotta go to God for that. But you have to make it right between you and your brother. So you gotta confess in that sense your fault to him or her. All right, all right. Uh you, you want you want to make a, a point? Uh, yeah, it's based on Brother Davis. So all right, all right, go right ahead. Uh, Sister White says in the same chapter, confession. She says, the apostle says, confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. James five sixteen. She says, confess your sins to God who only can forgive them, and your faults to another. If you have given offense to your friend or neighbor, you are to acknowledge your wrong, and it is his du duty freely to forgive you. Then you are to seek the forgiveness of God, because the brother you have wounded is the property of God, and in injuring him, you sinned against his creator and redeemer. The case is brought before the only true mediator, our great high priest, who was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin, and who was touched with the feeling of our infirmities, yet and is able to cleanse from every stain of iniquity. Hebrews 4.15. So the point is, we are to confess our sins to God. And if we have offended our brethren, we have to ask forgiveness of our brethren. All right, well said, well said. You, that's, all right, brother, brother Theo. Okay, okay, good evening, brothers and sisters. Uh, it's always a great um, blessing to see our young folks doing this, this work for the Lord, especially, uh, especially young sister Saunders, <laughs> hitting us with those LNG white quotes. <laughs> uh, you know, I appreciate that. 
Um, Brother Cash, you had asked a question earlier, and I was hoping that the panel may have um, um, brought up these two scriptures. Um, first one being in, anyone from the panel can read it for me too, please. Um, Second Peter chapter two, verses 20 through 22. Second Peter chapter two, verses 20 through 22. Second Peter chapter. Okay. Second Peter chapter two verses twenty through twenty two. Twenty through twenty two. Yes. Okay. When you find it, say amen. Second Peter chapter two verses twenty to twenty two. Oh, before before you read, yeah, Brother Isaac, the, question. The, the the question was, um, if a man um, gets forgiveness for sin and falls back into that sin, um, these two scriptures, um, I would. Okay. Say could probably answer that question too. So. Okay. Thank you. It says, For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of, of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they had known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it is happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the, 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 sow, the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Well, God, God can well, speak some serious words. Eh? Well, uh, Brother Theo, with, with, with that right, mm -hmm. that doesn't apply to the question I asked. Okay. This more or less replies to someone that abandons the, the faith completely. I, I just asked that you know, because the Bible also says a just man fall it seven times. So okay. it, the question I asked pertain to that in Proverbs. This more or less refers to someone that abandoned the faith completely because it says that they are, uh, it says that they turn from the holy commandments delivered unto them. So I, I, I take your point, but it, it, it doesn't, it doesn't co co coalesce with the, with the question, coincides with the question I, I asked. Okay, second text, Hebrews 10. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. Okay. Hebrews 10, verse 26. Okay, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. And it says, when you find the same, man. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. Mm. So would that answer the question more better than the first one? No. No. Still? Uh, no, it doesn't. <laughs> no. See, like I said, this, this again applies to the person that abandoned. See, the, the pro even in the first text you read, it says that the dog has turned back to his vomit. So that indicates a backsliding position. A person that turns back and goes to the world is what it indi in indicating. But this doesn't, this doesn't apply. See, the, the question I ask, right? Because at, the Bible says in James that at, at a point, all us went after divers' lusts. So it's, it came a time when a person may stand in for Christ and they really want to surrender their life, but they just happen to hold on to some sins they haven't fully gave over to Christ. Not that they are backsliding or went into the world, but it's that they just need to understand what it is to be surrendered to Christ. They haven't understand surrendering and the sanctifying power of God. This doesn't have nothing to do with, with, with that, Brother Theo, but I, I understand where you're coming from. But it doesn't relate to the question. I, I may not be understanding the question then. Want me to read the question again? I, the, the question was, if a man gets forgiveness for sin and goes back, falls back into that sin, is there, is there, is there a power, power for is them there power? to, is, is there, there power, power available for them to come okay. back? Okay. Is there power? That's probably what I was missing then. Okay. Okay, good? Yeah, we're good. All right. Any Thank more you. questions? You have one in the box? This, this is a question over the internet from Orlando, Florida. And it says, to the panel, why must I confess if God knows my heart anyhow? Uh, 
that's sorry. Um, <laughs> um, we must confess because it's a command. The Bible tells us in 1 John 1, 9, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. See, it's just like prayer. God knows our heart. He knows what we're going through. So the question is, why pray? But you pray because, well, it's a command. God tells us in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you will find. Hence, we confess because confession is a prerequisite to receiving forgiveness. Once again, confession is the condition for receiving forgiveness. So if you want to say, well, God knows my heart and don't confess, then unfortunately you haven't met that condition for receiving forgiveness. So that's why we confess. Number one, because it's a command. And number two, because it's a condition for receiving pardon from God. And, uh, and, uh, and another, another point uh, after that, well, the Bible says, well, our heart is desperately wicked above all things. So I don't think it's a good idea to rely on the, the, the statement, God knows your heart, to receive forgiveness for him, because he's saying it's desperately wicked. Now, like brother, brother, brother Isaac says, you know, God is ordering us to confess, confess our sins. But I would, I would read something. Read something for the record. First Timothy chapter five verse twenty-four. First Timothy chapter five verse twenty-four. Chapter five verse twenty-four. Some, everybody has it. Amen? All right. Some men's sins are open beforehand, going before to judgment, and some men they follow after. <coughs> Likewise, also the good works of, of some are manifest beforehand. They that are otherwise cannot be hurt, hit. Is that the text you want to read? Yeah. You want, want the mic? The system, my please. Um, good night. Based on the sanctuary service, the question from Melinda was, why do we need to confess if God already knows? That's what the question yes, was. Yes. Right, yes. Well, based on First Timothy five twenty four, it says some men's sins are open beforehand, going before the judgment. We know now that Christ is going over the records, right? So if your sins are in the sanctuary, then they could be blotted out, but that's when it goes beforehand on the judgment. But if your sin follow after, that means you did not confess your sin in order for it to be forgiven. Then it will, it will follow you after in terms of you have to pay for that sin later on. Amen, 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 amen. Brother, Brother Shannon? Yeah, to answer that question, we must look at what the definition of confession is. And confession simply is, um, you're basically admitting that you are wrong in a particular act. So the first form of rehabilitation is acknowledging that you are wrong. If I don't believe that I am wrong, then I don't need rehabilitation or I don't need conversion or any different thing. So the reason why we confess is because we are acknowledging to God that I have done wrong. Not necessarily that you know that I am wrong because you know all things. We know that. But the thing is, do I know that I am wrong? And once I know that I am wrong, then I know where to get my help from so that I may overcome this particular wrong. So that was the confession. Just acknowledge that I know that what I did was wrong or that the Holy Spirit revealed to me that what I did was wrong. Yeah, yeah you, you know, that's, that's powerful. In psychiatric treatment, they said the first, first steps to reform is acknowledging. Yeah, amen? Amen, amen, amen. Yeah, yeah, you know, addiction, yeah, that's, that's all right, all right. Powerful, powerful. Any more questions? Yeah, better, yes, better, sir. better. Sherman, you have another beef? I don't have a question. Someone asked me to ask this question. Go <laughs> right ahead, brother. The question is, is there a Bible text that cites that going to the movies is wrong? Uh, uh, let's turn to the book of, let's turn to the book of uh, 
Proverbs, not Proverbs, I, Psalm chapter 103, verse 5. Psalm chapter 101. 101. My apologies. 101. 101. And let's look at verse. Let's look at verse 3. It says here, I will set no I have said no wicked thing before my eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It should not cleave to me. So this, this part of the scripture say, you will set no wicked thing before your eyes. So basically, no, you can't, you can't, um, the question was, um, should you go to the movies? But if you, whatever you behold, you become changed. So by setting evil things before your eyes, it can change you intellectually and physically so no powerful 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 i want to go ahead go ahead brother go i mean <laughs> granted said no wicked thing before our eyes um two points number one we're living in the end of time and we saw it if we read it usually in revelation the time is at hand so um Honestly, we don't have time for that. You don't have time for that. Um, even if it was okay, you just don't have time for it because our mission right now is to be evangelism, evangelizing, sharing the, sharing the word of God. Um, and all of us here probably would admit, or, most of, or some of us here I should say would admit that, you know what, I feel as though I need more time in God's word. So if you feel as though you need more time in God's word, well, that time you had slot out for that, that could just be out the way, and I have time, more, more time for God's word. And another thing too is that we gotta understand as well is that, like he said, I was setting a wicked thing about, uh, before my eyes. Those actors, before they are actors, they are humans first. Before they are actors, they are humans first. So I don't care if that's Esther and the king. That's, t that's two humans who are not married. And what happens when I don't care if they playing, oh, this marriage, whatever case may, may, be, may be. Something happens when two human beings of the opposite sex come together. It's called fornication. So we beholding that. And we say, well, no, no, that's a Bible movie, so that's, that's Mary and Joseph. And so, no, 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 that's two actors. And they ain't married. And you watching someone literally, literally walk to the to walking straight to hell and what we doing we laughing man we should be crying you can it, it, really think about it you think Christ would be smiling if someone um, if someone walking on, or, on the pavement and a dump truck hit them no that's what they doing they are wasting their lives and we who know better we should be crying and weeping for these people because we see their condition like man they literally wasting their time that's that's a soul who could be right here with us Spreading the word of God. They wasting their time playing, playing like they're Superman, you can imagine? Grown man wearing a cape. Playing like a Superman and Batman. Wasting time. But no, we get the thrill of, out of it. You know why? Because we're not converted. So when we see those things, those movies and stuff, they shouldn't entertain us, man. They shouldn't entertain us. And because they don't entertain Christ. That's someone, that's, that's a soul right there who is wasting time and who, are, who is risking that he may be lost forever. That's deep, man. Amen, amen, amen. You, you want to make a point? Let me, let me tackle that. Uh, let's turn to Philippians 4, verse 8. And it's so funny, we was talking about something similar to this in, um, felt during fellowship earlier today. Just say amen when you get it. And it says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, 
whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, which is another word for righteousness, and if there be any praise, think on these things. So let's just look at what a movie is. You pay $10, that's money you could spend on food, to sit down for two hours max to watch something that is not true, uh, something that is not pure, something that is not honest, a complete lie, fiction, um, um, fan fiction, and something that isn't righteous in any way. So to the person who asks the question, this states clearly that, hey, this sets a standard. Ask yourself when you watch that movie, is this true? Is this pure? Is this honest? Is this just? Is this righteous? And if you say no to any of those questions, save your $10. Go spend that in and lend little generals on some, some chickpeas. Amen. Um, just, to, just to say one thing too in reference to movies. Um, in Romans chapter 1 verse 28 and 29, you saw so desire, you could go there or write it down. It's Romans chapter 1, verse 28 and 29. It says, And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Now, this is what I, 29 and 30 and 31 and 32 is what I want us to zero in on in reference to watching shows, movies. And not just movies, you know, episodes and sequels and sitcoms and all those other stuff. It says, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despite, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breaker, that's divorce, without natural affection, implacable, Unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of that, not only do not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that, that do it. Now, brethren, when we go and we sit down and we watch these 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 those shows or those movies, they they promote the, the sad sins that are in this book. They promote fornication, so on and so forth. And when we sit down and we behold these things. The Bible says, behold, we become changed. And the Bible also says the eyes is a window to the soul. By what you beholding, you become changed. I know, you know it might be strong, silent, but you know, fox don't care about feelings. Amen? So, therefore, if we, if we sit down and we behold these things, and have pleasure in, in, in watching the people that commit them, then we become, we, we become their uh, partakers of their sins. Amen. And God and God doesn't is not pleased with that. Sister Sanders. This is a quote from Steps to Christ. Now that you have given yourself to Jesus, do not draw back, do not take yourself away from him. But day and but day but day and day say I am Christ. I have given myself to him and asked him to gi give you his spirit and keep you by his grace as it is by giving yourself to God and believing him. The apostle says, as ye have therefore, therefore received Christ in Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Colossians 2 and 6. Amen, amen. Brother Sadness, wanted to make a comment? Uh, just to talk about the movie thing. Uh, if you go to uh, Isaiah 33, verse 14 and 15. And we could ask ourselves when we watch these movies if these things are not displayed as, as mentioned in Romans chapter 1. And it says, The 
The sinners in Zion are afraid. Fearfulness had surprised the hypocrites. Now this is the question that Christ asks. Who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who among us shall dwell with everlasting burnings? Then it says, He that walketh righteously and speaketh uprightly, he that despiseth the gain of oppressions, that shaketh his hands from holding bribes, that stoppeth his ears from hearing of blood, and shut his eyes from seeing evil. So when we read that text, the question with movies, we see all those things in movies. The, the, the display of blood, the vice of wickedness, we hear in the wickedness, and especially in the, the, the music and stuff like that. And, and also the, 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 the bribes, people get in swing trying to take advantage of, of one person from the other. So we see all these things uh, uh, mentioned in, in this text concerning the movies. And the thing also about what Romans chapter 1 says is that, verse 32, people may say that, oh, it ain't me who doing these things. i just watching them. Right. No, but by you watching them, you're doing the same thing. So that's what the Bible and Mark just thought to stay away. I mean, to stay away from these things. And like what uh, Serrano says, if it ain't pure, if it ain't virtuous, if it ain't of good report, then we need to stay away from it. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, Sister, Sister Sanders, she has a question. And uh, Brother Hengel has a question also. Yes, good evening, panel. Um, when we uh, come out of bondage, right, who are we yoked to while in bondage? Where is our yoke? Say again. Who, is our, who are we yoked to when we are in bondage or in sin? Satan. Satan, amen. Mm. And God asks us to leave Satan and come mm. to him. Mm -hmm. And once we surrender our lives to Christ, right, we have no more pleasure in those things of the world, right? Amen. So we're actually yoked to Christ as believers, right? Yes. And if we're going to drag Christ into the movie, <laughs> In a go. In a go. Yeah. So we should think about that. Amen. Amen. Sister, Sister Sanders. Um, it's just a comment um, about the movies and food eating. First, you look upon the food, right? You don't taste that with your eyes, even before you put it into your mouth. When I used to work at Fresh Market, you fix the food a certain way. If the food don't look good, the customers don't buy. So you fix the food a certain way, all is gone. So it's the same thing if you look upon a movie. You fix Aiden, <coughs> what you gonna, I mean, um, um, how you gonna fix that food if it's displaying in a movie? Wow, that food look good. So, won't you wanna try it at home? Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing if you watch the movie and some of the stunts that they're doing. Wouldn't you wanna try it? Mm -hmm. So, by beholding you, do become change. Yes, yes, yes. And and, and and even poisons have died and all. Little children have killed their siblings by practicing. Uh, uh, stunts and stuff they are what they, they have watched on uh, on the television. Brother, Brother Wilson. I have a question, um, but before I go on with my question, you know I can't help but encourage y'all as youths for what y'all are doing, what Christ are doing through y'all, not y'all. Amen. You know, to God be the, gl the glory, and I encourage you all to, that you all humble, <clears throat> that God give you all the grace and the power to humble to the Spirit of God, and you all up there. Some of you all making mistakes, but that's God we have humble in you all. So, you all be encouraged, and you know, realize that you all young, you all are in a learning stage and, a, and in a learning process. And I also want to encourage you all, you know, 
you know, when you make the mistakes, that's God's way of also showing you, look to me, you know, pray to me. It's not you, it's not you, it's not you. And mistakes is a part of a life learning lesson. Um, the Lord said in his word, you know, if you lack wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, ask him. It's him that give it. Um, you may see the best, or who you may consider as an excellent or perfect preacher, preach and he said, Lord, you know, one day I aspire to be like him, but I always remember at the end of the day, I aspire to be like Christ, but the point is, you know, that preacher or that speaker or that person who you admire, you know, they didn't start off um, um, where they, you know, where they was or in, in that excellent position. They had to start off somewhere, somewhere down from the bottom, and they made plenty of mistakes, ran through many roughness and climbing mountain hills and valleys to get where they get. So, you know, don't look to yourself or take confident or shy away from the things of God because of you might make mistakes sometime. <clears throat> you know, that's all the beauty. That's all the beauty of it. You know, so humble and let God's spirit have its way in in you um, in your growth in your growth with the Lord. Um, the question I like to ask is also is is um, youths go through it a lot as well as even seniors in Christ. You know, we, um, we find ourselves, you know, we come in Christ, forsake, confess, and <clears throat> confess, consake, repent, turn from sin, walking in the Lord, and then we find ourselves slipping and falling so easily, so much time, <clears throat> repeatedly, Sometimes the particular uh, particular sin, you know, some sins more they don't face us, they don't bother us. You know, we just we got plenty of strength in them. There they, isn't an issue to us. But some or one or two or a few particular sins, man, you just keep falling. You just keep like, like I just don't have the strength and the power, you know, to overcome this sin. I just this sin just keep beating me up. What's going on? What's going on with me as a person? Why? You know, I ain't getting the victory in this, and why just beat me up like this? What am I doing wrong? What should I do? Well, first, first you should believe that the Word of God should do what it says it would do. In Isaiah chapter 55, if we could go there. It's Isaiah. It says, we can start from Voices 8, and it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than, than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours. My thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and return it not thither, but water the earth, and make it it bring forth and bud, that it may seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the things and the thing whereto I sent it. So here it is. God is saying to you, better, brethren, it's better well than that. Once he said, behold, you are a new creature, you are a new creature. Creature. The, the only problem it is that you might have problem in falling or stumbling head as is you don't really believe the promise of what Christ says. And Christ is saying, today, if you would hear my voice, harken not, harden not your heart. So if you would believe that, hey, the word, by the word of God, once he spoke it out of his mouth, then I am beholden, changed person. It's just your, 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 your system of belief. You have to really believe that God says what he says, and he says what he means. And secondly, you must understand what it is to be surrendered in Christ. Because the rich young ruler, when he went to Christ, he appeared to be a righteous man. He was sincere, but the only thing his problem was is he wasn't surrendered to Christ. Because if he was surrendered to Christ, those stuff Christ asked him to sell and give to the poor, he wouldn't have been so sorrowful when Christ said that to him, if you, if, you, if you get what I'm saying. So my brother, the, my only, I don't know if the panelists have anything to add on it, but my only, 
my only word to you, brother, is that you must believe. It's just your belief. You have to really believe that God has forgiven me, and he has given me a new slate, and he has given me victory. I must obtain this victory now. Amen? To Christ. Can I, um, just to give an example on how impressionable our minds are, and even when we think we aren't retaining some of the things that we see, subconsciously we are. Um, just last week Sunday, I went to visit a friend, and she asked me a question to examine her daughter to find out why is it she is so violent. And I looked through her school books, her drawings. There are always pictures of um, death. She's stabbing someone, is bleeding all over the place, all kind of weird and distorted pictures, half faces. And I sat down and I just watched her behavior throughout the day. And what was she beholding there most of the time that I was there? Playing video games. You talk about movies. I know a lot of young people like to play video games. And I took her iPad away from her. And as I went through, the majority of her games were about shooting, killing people in jail. I mean, just violent. And as parents, parents have the responsibility to um, challenge, I mean, challenge or channel what their children behold. So if, if we are, if parents are allowing their children to behold movies that are, movies that, um, Protein, violence, video games that have a lot of violence, then we wonder why our children are committing mass homicide. Just last week in Florida, that teenager who killed 13 children, sorry, 17 children at that school. And even before, the person who went to the movie theater and shoot up the place, um, violent movies, violent video game. So we really have to be careful as adults what we behold and even as parents what we allow children to behold because the mind absorbs these things. That's true. And, and the music also. Music if you also. music also and the music industry has, has perpetrated a lifestyle they don't live. Like for instance, you have like sing, singers like, I mean I won't call no one name. Man. I, mean, I can call a name any of them. For instance like Beyonce, they sing about Finding other man and leading other man. For my was small, Deanne, Beyonce was married to one man. She never got divorced. But the ladies over here are sucking up what she's singing, and they're going from man to man, and she's sitting back and saying, hey, these, these, these are fools. They're fools. Man, uh, rap artists nowadays, they perpetrating guns, and they don't be doing these things. They do, not, they do not commit these acts. If they would, the United States government would be on them. They don't commit mass shooting guns, come on. But they perpetrating it, they portraying it to the youths, so the youths go and live a lifestyle that is false. And Hollywood will pay for that before God. Uh, who? Um, good night. Um, I used to go to movies a lot, but I never recall my mind or recall myself thinking in the movies, spiritual things, I'm concentrating on the the movie, no matter which movie I go to see, I concentrate on, on the movie. Um, yes, we shouldn't go to the theater, but there's something else too. I can go to the shop, I can buy that same movie, or rent it, and bring it home, and watch it. So not only is the location we have to be careful with, it is the movie itself. Because the same movie I could watch to the show, and if we say it's wrong to go to the show, which is wrong, then the same movie, we shouldn't even watch it in our homes. Because it's the same movie. You see what I'm saying? It is the same movie. And not only is the location, but it's the movie also itself. Yeah. Amen. And ladies, lifetime don't make home, they break them. <laughs> Amen. Okay, good evening. Um, <clears throat> going to the movies was one of, um, was like the hardest thing for me to break because um, I didn't do much socially. And um, 
It was just something we did as a family. Well, <clears throat> it's just amazing that so many Christians from other denominations that see absolutely nothing wrong with going to the movies. So you would find um, a lot of them there. This weekend, for an instance, my daughter paid $40 to see the Black Panther. $40, okay, and why? Because it is an all black movie, only one white actor, and it's a Marvel movie, and it's the best they proclaim that, um, you know, my thing is, and, and, and she, like her and others, many of them, many of them, and, and it's so unfortunate because unfortunate in one case but for me when I sit down and I look at the world because I know four o'clock this morning I couldn't sleep and um, I got up that's when I go to bed too early I got up and um, I was listening to a documentary about the Seventh Day Adventists and the faults of the Seventh Day Adventists and the person that was he was crediting the church but he was also making fun of the church at the same time. Um, certain things that we believe. One of those things was that the Seventh-day Adventists, yeah, they'll tell you Jesus is coming tomorrow. It's tomorrow. You know, uh, you got to be prepared for tomorrow. And I say to the Christians out there that find things like the movies, because you know when you're in a movie, like I saw the passion of the Christ and when I was sitting in the movie, I was weeping, I was crying, I was emotional, I was all taken with the movie. And it has that same effect on you. Every movie you go to see, you put your whole self into that. Yep. And when you put your whole self into that, where is Christ in that equation? And like, as was said earlier, all the sexual scenes, the cursing, the swearing, and also the cursing and the swearing of those who are attending the movie, if they're supporting one side other than the other. I mean, you know, there is so much negative, so much negatives in attending movies. And furthermore, it's too expensive, as was said before, um, to even attend. But and I, and I often say to my children, but what if Christ comes and you're there? What if Christ comes and you're in, in these um, concerts um, that, that are so riotous? The other day you had shootings of people attending a concert. There, there's another mass murder scene. Right now, shooting, so many shootings are even in the schools. I don't even know what we're supposed to do to survive these last days. But all I say to Seventh-day Adventists, to us, you know, let's just stay focused. Let's continue to study. Let's continue to do all of, the, you know, portray all of the good qualities, as was read earlier, those things that are of a good report. Those are the things that we ought to be focusing on. And um, Hollywood would always make their movies glamorous. The one thing that we also promote that um, I struggled with was, why can't I go to Charybda? You know, and um, I also love track and field. I, I grew up in track and field. So, you know, and of course, you know, I'm, you know, <clears throat> I've been a Junkanoo activist for 42 years. That's more than half of my life. And so there are, these things pull you because they pull you away from God. And it's, a, it's an ongoing battle, but you know, I believe that I will get the victory as I've gotten the victory over the movies. I will get the victory over all of the other um, things that um, just draw us away. And when we are there, we're not focused on God. So if God is not there, we ought not be there. Amen. 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 Yes, that's the end. No further questions or comments. We'll pray and we'll close up. I can pray.
to our most gracious, kind, loving, caring, merciful Father God in heaven. To our most gracious, kind, loving, caring, merciful Father God which art in heaven. As we come right now through faith in the name of thine only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Dear Lord, we thank you for the youth segment today, Lord. On the, on the chapter based on confession and the book Steps to Christ. The Lord confession really shows us that just as though how we have friends, we can talk to we can talk to them freely about anything, the same way you want us to talk to you freely about everything. So there, Lord, we ask for the power not to hold back anything from Thee, but give us the power, O oh God, to surrender all things, all our heart, all our mind, and all our soul to Thee, O oh God. Father, we just ask that these words that were spoken here tonight, concerning the movies, and even concerning the confession of sin, we ask that you hold these things in our soul there, Lord, that we will not forget these things, and that your grace will wrought a complete transformation within us to change us from worldliness to holiness. And if we have any sin that we, co that we did not confess, we ask that thine Holy Spirit convict us of sin and give us the power to confess those things and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. O oh God, like was mentioned before, my brother Isaac, the end is truly drawing nigh. And we need to give up these things that separate us from thee. So Lord, we ask for power to do your will in this wicked and perverse generation. That men will see the good works that you do within us and glorify you, Father, which art in heaven. Guide us home safely and continue to be at the meeting here tonight. It's my prayer in Jesus' name.